Get ready for your inbox to be flooded with some fairly well-written essays in 2023, all courtesy of OpenAI and ChatGPT. That's right, your students are going to start outsourcing their homework to artificial intelligence. And I've got news for you, you're going to have no way of knowing that they did so. This isn't future science fiction, folks. This is happening right now, or at least since November of 2022, a month ago as of shooting this video. So let me show you what we're up against with ChatGPT. I'm over here at ChatGPT right now, and it's asking for an input. So let's go ahead and put something in. Okay, so in a 500-word essay, compare mercantilism with comparative advantage. So let's see what it does. So it goes ahead and starts pumping out content pretty darn quickly, I might add, faster than me. And you know, I, I actually am a pretty fast writer. So we take a look at this. Mercantilism is an economic system that was prevalent in the 16th to the 18th centuries and focused on increasing a nation's wealth by accumulating gold and silver through positive balance of trade. You know what? That's, that's correct. On the other hand, comparative advantage is an economic concept that explains how countries can benefit from international trade even if one country is more efficient in producing all goods. The theory of comparative advantage suggests that countries should specialize in the production of goods and services for which they have a comparative advantage or a lower opportunity cost. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, we could continue reading, but the point is, if a student submitted this to me, I would say, yes, you absolutely nailed the key concepts. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about ChatGPT, I've written an article about it. There's a link in the description below that will give you some insight into what this is all about. But what I really want to focus on right now is what does this mean for us as teachers, instructors, and, well, professors? And hey, by the way, yeah, I'm speaking with professors here, but students, if you're watching this, stick around to the end. I want to have a chat with you. First, let me point out that plagiarism checkers are not going to catch this. Everything that you saw generated there on the screen, it is, it is generated text. It's not pulled from other articles or anything. Again, you can learn more about how this artificial intelligence works on your own time, but it's not going to be caught by our traditional plagiarism checkers. So we can't rely on those tools. What we need to do is tweak our assignments to mitigate for the risk of students relying overly on ChatGPT. Now, when I say relying overly, we'll come back to that. But here are four things that you can do to modify your assignments to mitigate for the risk. The first thing you can do is require that students include insights developed in your in-class discussions. So right now, ChatGPT isn't omniscient, at least not yet, so it has no idea what was discussed in class. So by requiring that students include in-class insights, they have to kind of, well, provide insights. Furthermore, this helps them, well, it gives them an incentive to take notes because they need stuff to include in their essays. And well, that's a pretty good thing. It helps them focus, helps them stay engaged, and helps them learn the content. So yeah, that's a win too. The second thing you can do is require that students include insights and quotes and so forth from your own study materials. Now, one of the weaknesses that ChatGPT has is that, well, if it's not widely available online, it doesn't reference the material. So, okay, for example, I have a ton of stuff online. I mean, I've got this whole channel, I've got articles, I've got books, and so on and so forth. But I got news for you. I'm not famous enough for ChatGPT to really give a darn about me. If a student were to say, hey, uh, what does Lon Schiffbauer have to say about this? It would have no idea what to 
feed up. So by requiring students to reference your own study materials, that content which you provided, it serves as a forcing function for students to, well, basically do the readings. Third, similar to what we were talking about, about you know, providing your own content because it's not widely circulated on the internet, require that students discuss local current events in their discussion. So connect the theory and the ideas and the topics of, of whatever the essay is about to what is happening in the world and the community today. So it requires the students to make that connection between theory and real world, but in the context of what's happening around them today. ChatGPT won't do that for them. Fourth, require that the student provide personal real-life examples in their essay. Now, you want to make sure that it's an example that they would actually get kind of fired up to talk about, something that intrinsically motivates them. So if you say, hey, tell me about a time that you failed a class, they're not going to get all excited about a time that they failed a class. And frankly, on such a broad topic, ChatGPT will hook them up. It will give a pretty salient example. On the other hand, if you ask a student, hey, tell me why you love your favorite hobby so much, ChatGPT has no way of responding to that. But the student, oh man, they want to talk about that stuff all day long. So find a way to spark their intrinsic motivators as they feed up their personal examples in their essay submission. So these are four ways that you can modify your assignments to at least to some degree mitigate for OpenAI Chat GPT, this artificial intelligence tool. Now, I understand mitigate for is not the same as completely remove. Here's what I'm saying. Students are going to use this. They are going to use it. Furthermore, there's nothing in these examples that I fed up, these, these techniques, that would prevent a student from using ChatGPT to write the bulk of their essay, but then go into the essay afterwards and add personal examples and current events and samples and examples and quotes from the in-class discussion and the, and the instructor's material. They can add all that stuff in. Okay, but remember, and I'm going out on a limb here, folks, education is about learning and growing and processing and thinking and analyzing. It's not about output. Frankly, I don't care about the essay. I care about what they learned in writing the essay. Well, you might say, okay, Long, well, they didn't write the essay because ChatGPT wrote it for them, right? Yes. However, they have to go in afterwards and tweak it, edit it, rewrite it, and, and add in the examples and all the things that are required and so forth. And speaking as somebody who does a lot of editing, that's not easy stuff right? They're going to have to really go in and work that essay that chat GPT created for them to make it their essay to at least meet the requirements of the assignment. Well, they're probably going to learn something about the topic along the way. So I'm going to take that as a win. You have to understand there's nothing we can do currently to stop students from using this tool. All we can really do is help them continue to learn and grow and flourish and develop as they use the tool. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking. Now, students, I want to talk with you guys for a second, okay? Yeah, I just kind of explained how you can use ChatGPT to kind of get a head start on your assignments because it's a pretty darn powerful tool. But Guys, you're effing smart. You have incredible insights. You have a lot to offer. Why would you outsource your thinking to the machines? Okay? There's probably going to be a day that we are going to have to answer to our robot overlords and Skynet will become a real thing. 
But before Skynet becomes real, we need a generation of human beings to outsource their thinking to artificial intelligence, to basically, you know, say, I'm out. I'm, I'm not going to do any more thinking. I'll let the machines do my thinking for me. That's the first step to us abdicating our role as sentient human beings in charge of our destiny. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going overboard. But the point is, you have insights. You have intelligence. You, you guys get things that I don't. Okay? I've been on this earth for over half a century. I have more degrees and certifications than God. And yet, there are things that you can teach me that would just blow my mind. Do that. Leverage what you have. Value what you have. Value what you can become. Education is all about developing our minds and brains and souls and our anima to become something great and amazing and accomplish great and amazing things. Don't just outsource that to AI. You are part of a generation that you're the first generation that has to make this decision. You're the first generation that has to make this decision. I didn't have to make this decision, right? I didn't even have the internet. Oh, back in my day, I had to read encyclopedias. You are the first generation that can make the conscious decision on whether or not to abdicate consciousness. All right? So use the tools as you will, but I'm telling you, you have a lot to offer. I hope you, you give the world that thing that makes you special. All right. All right. That's, that's it, guys. Good luck. <laughs> And and if Skynet comes around, it was good knowing you. We'll see you later.